Hello, hello everyone, and once again, welcome back to Israel in Style, where you get an inside look at the top Israeli designers, the best musicians, artists, bloggers, and so much more right here from Israel. Today we have a bunch of very special guests with me right here in the studio, so why waste even a second? So, to kick off today's episode, we are talking happy hours. Now, honestly, between us, who doesn't love a good happy hour, am I right? You get out of a long day of work looking to just grab a good drink with a snack, help you wind down from a hard day's work at a cheaper price. But how do you know what bars have the best happy hour deals or what bars even do happy hour? Well, that's where my next guest comes in. He has one of the top rated apps currently on the charts. And with me here is the CEO and founder of Happy Hours TLV, Roy Herman. Hi. Hey, what's up? How's what's it going? Up? Everything's good. How are All you? Right, awesome. Okay, so tell me, how, what is Happy Hour Tel Aviv? How did it come about? So Happy uh, Hour Tel Aviv is basically an app that lists all of the happy hours in Tel Aviv, gives you additional information like their schedules, uh, what's exactly being offered, and allows you to easily filter through their location, distance, rating, and basically allows you to just make an easy decision on where you want to go and get happy hours. And so, I mean, maybe this might be like a dumb question, but like how did that idea come up? Like were you seeing like a, a something missing in the market? Yeah, so as a resident of Tel Aviv that's, you know, making sure to take advantage of all the happy hours, and as an app developer, I, I was walking around, you know, having a hard time figuring out what, what's happening where. The deals are always changing. Right. Um, and it seemed to me like there could be an easier solution to, to, make, to make this, make the, taking advantage of happy hours right. um, just in the palm of your hands without having to ask people. Um, so as a person who likes to create things, I just went home, started kind of building the, building the app, um, gathering the information. One thing led to another. And I released the app a few weeks later. Uh, just for iOS, you know, it, it, start, it didn't do so well, didn't get a lot of downloads, and then a few months after, actually, when I released Android, because most Israelis have Android, it really started taking off. Oh, really? Because yeah. that's so funny. I didn't even realize the iOS-Android thing. Like, I didn't yes. realize that that was such a big factor in who, especially here in Israel, who actually gets to see this app and who gets to use it. Mm -hmm. And so how'd you figure that out? You just so trial actually, and error and figured it out? I have I've released a lot of apps, and specifically okay. in Israel, I've always seen that once you release Android, that's when it really takes off because you're kind of wow. cutting off the distribution where you're only allowing a, a smaller percentage of the market to use it. Right, because um, it's basically saying, like, if you don't have an iPhone, you can't use my exactly, app. Exactly, yeah. Where in the States, you know, that's not a big problem. There's a lot more people and there's a lot more iPhone users. Tel Aviv, which isn't, you know nearly the size of New York City or things right. like that, it, it is really important. So I decided to build the app. You know, it's also kind of my one of these things that I wanted to do to be able to walk around Tel Aviv and know people are using something that I built just on the side. Um, so it was just a, a side project that's for fun. But you know, seeing it take off and people really, really like it, getting really good feedback. I don't mean uh, to laugh at you, but it just sounds so crazy. Like, do you hear yourself when you say that? He's just like, you know, I woke up one morning and I was like, I'm going to create an app and then went home and, and created it. It's not that easy, Roy. Like, how do you do that? What, like, what background well, do you have in I've that? I've built a lot of apps. I've built over 40, uh, 40, 45 apps. You know, I'm building every month probably a new app. Um, so it's kind of to come to the stage where I can just take an idea and right. go home and build it over the weekend. I built the iOS app over the weekend. Um, obviously, it's not like the most sophisticated products always, but it's, it's good enough where people are getting value out of it. And, you know, Snapchat was built over a very short period of right. time. Facebook, all these ideas start off very small and, and expand. And this is just an easy way for me to test out, kind of throw, sure. throw the hook in the water and yeah. see, is this, is this something that people like? So the idea is definitely to expand it, not only have happy hours, but also add lunch specials, brunches. I was just um, about to ask you. I was like, yeah. so when do I get the personalized app for myself where I can see mm. the best deals for hamburgers? Mm, like, that's when coming is that out happening? soon. That's coming out soon. That's going to be a promise? special feature just for you. I'll make sure Emmanuel you can talk Kadosh. it. <laughs> recommend it. You can get like your own badges up there. There you go. See, uh, now we're getting All right, we need to here. talk about yeah, the yeah. equity deals we'll afterwards. Um, so wait, tell me. I know you kind of gave me the gist of what you guys offer, but tell me, like, what are the features? What can we really see per happy hour so right now you could see the distance or location from you the rating from google um, mm -hmm. the details of the happy hour which means what hours it's available as well as what is what are you actually getting from the happy hour if it's one plus one on drinks if it's 30 mm percent -hmm. off of the food menu if it's a chaser for 12 shekels or things like that and you know it's it's really important israel because they say it's a salary of uh, detroit but prices of new york city so israelis love getting a bargain and there's actually a lot more bargains than people think. And so right. instead of going out and paying full price, you can actually find the same restaurants or restaurants that you would like at half the price. So to me, it's like kind of the, the killer app for Israelis and Tel Avivians Definitely. especially. It's also helping build community because think about it. Like, 
we can vouch for this. Most of Tel Avivers that live here after work, they like to grab a drink, they like to go meet friends. We have a very like lively city here. So it's like after work, you guys are constantly doing things, right? Exactly. So it's like if people can see the distance of how far the best happy hour is, it'll ultimately build a community within that bar. It's like, oh, this is our spot. This is our spot. So that's really creative. Yeah. And so, okay, so you said you've built 45 apps. What's the next big project that we can get excited for? Um, I have something that I just launched today in South Africa. It's a collaborative security uh, app, which basically means in South Africa there's a lot of, of crime. You know, the, the country isn't doing a really good job uh, and the government isn't doing a really good job to uh, protect its citizens. So they're basically protecting themselves by uh, organizing a neighborhood community, uh, neighborhood community watch or private security companies. Um, and actually even helping themselves, just regular people responding to strangers or their neighbors that are in distress. They're all doing it through WhatsApp today, and there's a lot of issues with that. You don't right. know the person's location. You don't exactly know what happened. So this idea allows everybody to report when they're in distress, but also allows everybody to respond um, and, help, and help neighbors and actually save lives and make the community safer. Amazing. Um, and, so, and this is just a pilot right now in South Africa, and then you guys are planning yeah. to see how it goes. So we're starting right now in a small area of Cape Town. The okay. idea is to ex expand to Cape Town and then to all of South Africa. Africa. Um, you know, I think it really has potential to change change the country, which is just hit by crime and really, you know, making it a, a complicated and, and bad situation there Definitely. for many people. Um, and then eventually we can bring it out to other places and, and make safety kind of a collaborative, uh, collaborative job rather than just giving it to, to specific organizations. Right, especially if the organizations aren't you know, doing their part, yeah. not for everyone exactly. equally. And like, you know, there's the crime rate is only going up. So it's like you, something needs to change. Exactly. And hopefully this app will yeah, yeah. be it. One last final question between two hybrids, as you like to call mm. us, American, Israeli, American, yeah. Israeli, where is the best happy hours, America or Tel Aviv? I think uh, Tel Aviv has right? the best happy hours. I yeah. definitely And agree. the best hours too. Yeah. Like, that's seven to nine usually, where I think New York is a lot earlier. It's and, like five to six. Yeah, you exactly. have an hour, that's it. Exactly. That's your happy hour. So Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv's <laughs> Spot. Amazing. Good. So thank you so much thank for joining you. me. Thank you I'm for me so in. happy. Happy Hour Tel Aviv is blowing up, and I'm sure it's going to be number one before you even know it. I hope so too. Thank, thank you. you. All right. You heard it here first. If you are in the area and are looking for the hottest happy hour spots to check out, there's only one solution. Download the Happy Hour Tel Aviv app right now and get drinking. There is nothing like going on vacation and having everything planned ahead of time. Now, keep in mind, that is most definitely not how I travel, but in an ideal world, it totally would be. Most people like visiting a new country and seeing all the ins and outs, but why do all the research when someone else can set up your trip with no problem? Well, my next guest is the founder of the exclusive luxury boutique experience travel company, Travel Composer, Khani Sand. How are you? Hi, thank you. There you, you go. Me. I got your name right. We're getting there. <laughs> so tell me, Khani, how did you come up with, you know, Travel Composer and why? So I grew up in the hospitality industry. My father's a hotelier. I grew up living in an actual hotel. So really? Eloise in the plaza. No way. Bit. Yes. Hold up. Is that real? That's amazing. What is that experience? That's like the sweet life of Zach and Cody. Everyone so, wants to do that. Exactly. That's, that's the modern day version to <laughs> Eloise at the Plaza. Um, so obviously it was fun, and, but what it also ingrained right. was what hospitality is, what services, watching it constantly, doing walkthroughs with my father, uh, meeting all the industry leaders. It was very obvious that that was what I wanted to do. Yeah. It's, a people, it's a people profession. Uh, it's creating happy memories. Special moments and experiences for people that are coming, whether it's to a different country, a new city, things like that. Like it's you're in charge of job. there. It's yeah. a happy job. And I think that's very... And so through that, how did Travel Composer come so, about? So years of working in the hospitality on the arranging trip side in New York. I worked for Federation and did all their missions to oh, Israel. Wow. Then I moved back to Israel, worked for a couple of different hotel chains, uh, worked for the Israel Hotel chain, headed up all their North American market. And then went and got my MBA. And uh, I think what happens when you go back to school is the creative juices start to flow and you start not wanting to work for the big for the big corporation, but you want to create your own. Right. And I put together a business plan and found an investor, looked at it almost like as a startup. Yeah. Really looked at it in a professional business point of view, saw that there was a niche that wasn't being fulfilled for North American travelers to have a personal experience. A luxury personal experience. A luxury personal experience. Well, luxury <laughs> can also is about service. Right. And Which a creating lot of people individual don't understand that. customized itineraries right. and listening to every request. 
Uh, and about three years ago, Travel Composer was born. And due to the fact that tourism is doing so well in Israel, almost four, four million people in 2018, due to the fact that Israel is on the radar of all the magazines and all, their Travel Composer is doing extremely well. We right. get requests. So um, tell me, um, how does it differ from other travel composer type companies, you know? So again, we're not reinventing the wheel. Right. <laughs> What's different is thinking about every detail, um, patience, never saying no. <laughs> Finding a way to do what the customer like is looking to do. And listening to the customer. So right. we match the guide to the client. Oh, interesting. We match the sites to the client. We match the hotel. Where right. do you usually stay when you come to, when you travel in the world? Right. What do you like boutique? Do you like larger? Do you like classic? Do you like modern? And so who are you really catering to? Because you said specifically North America, so I don't know if that's... So North America is Canada and the United States. Okay. That's, or English speaking countries. Right. Uh, clients who come where I can add value. They're not coming just for a vacation to lay on the beach because then you can go into a booking.com and book a hotel and I don't have... Half of the day, yeah. What I create is a full experience so a real trip someone who's coming from 8 to 12 days wow. who wants to see Israel we do everything from the moment they land we escort them from the plane wow. all the way to restaurant reservations shows amazing guides and so we mentioned before luxury being the very specific aspect of um, you know travel composers so what is so luxurious here in so, Israel 20 years ago, the word was harder. It was hard yeah. in Israel. Yeah. Israel has come a, f a long way in the last 20 years. The hotels have improved phenomenally. And there are now luxury hotels. Mitzpe Ramon in the Negev Desert <sighs> was an unvisited site by tourists, by North American tourists, right. luxury tourists, until the Bereshit Hotel by Israel opened. Because then you have a luxurious My, hotel. I, it's a dream, like that hotel. And then you can create Jeep rides. We do. True. We do stargazing and bonfires. We do rappelling. We do all. But you have a hotel that can cater to this clientele. Amazing. And I can talk about you know all these yeah, all these hotels that are happening now yeah. in Israel. There was a long time where there was a lull and there weren't new hotels being built. Yeah, Bereshit were... definitely, definitely maybe paved, I don't know if it was one of the first, but it definitely paved the way for how people also look from the outside in because they look at this gorgeous place and they're like, I can't believe this is in Israel, let alone in the middle of the desert, like where you can really experience the desert. So tell me, so where can people contact you if they're looking to set up a full luxury <laughs> exploration trip? You can go to www.travelcomposer.com and we're there to help. Amazing. We'll create your, based on your budget, based on your interests, based on the number of people. It can be anywhere from two. We have couples wow, who, okay. come who just want to, we call them explore. destination travelers who just want to explore Definitely. an interesting country, all the way to your classic bar mitzvah trips. Uh, you know, 60% of people, tourists who come to Israel are actually Christian, so we have a Christian market, a high-end Christian market. Um, wow, amazing. So I'm sure, hopefully, a lot of people are going to be listening to this and you get, get inspiration because you could come to a new city and you could do the whole looking online trip advisor thing, but it won't be the same unless you have, you know, somebody that's had experience, that knows the ins and outs, that can give you, like you said, a catered travel experience for you and your family or whoever it is that you're coming with. Israel, Israel is a unique country. I almost compare it to going on safari in Africa. When you go on safari in Africa, you're not going to do it through booking.com. Right, exactly. Israel is a very unique country and a guide and a driver that connects the whole country. Amazing. So it's definitely one of the countries. If you go to Italy, I say rent a car. Right, and then drive around. But Israel is definitely one of those city, one of those uh, countries that you have to, you got to have helps. a travel guide with her. So thank you so much, honey, thank for being you. here. If you are looking for the absolute perfect trip to the Holy Land, Travel Composer is just what you're looking for. Make sure to head over to their website to check out everything they offer for your next visit to Israel. Guess what time it is? Hot Topics Off Topic time. We're here to talk about all the hot topics we know you want to hear about. Some may or may not be a little off topic, but it's totally fine. For those who don't remember, I'm joined in the studio with ILTV's Adi Caspi and Nuri Lizaraga. So yes. we have a bowl filled with questions here that we're each going to pick from. You have 15 seconds to explain your answer. Don't be a drag, make it fun, make it fast. Hello, guys. Hi. What's so, up? We are going to be talking about pretty random questions here. There's no, there's no specific hot topic, but who wants to go first? I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah. Okay. Okay, okay. I guess I'll go first. Yes. Let's see. I'm really excited. So, 
who was your first celeb crush? Ooh, Ooh. Nick Jonas. I love it. <laughs> I love it. She was like, I don't want to go first, but I'll answer the question that you pick up. It's so funny. Like, I also, I, I think my first celeb crush was Nick Carter from the Backstreet Boys. Oh my God. Do they count? Can we go all the way yeah. back then? I mean, that's like a I mean, Nick Carter? I've I was literally so eight. Hot. So, you know. He has there tattoos was Nick Carter and, and Aaron Carter, right? Where was Aaron Where? Carter? Well, we don't want to know, know that. Oh, okay. Only Nick. We only, we only have Nick here. <laughs> Nick is the only one that we like. Yeah. Okay, so that was your celebrity crush, but I feel like there's a new celebrity crush that you have going on. I think that was my first one. Okay, so okay. Second goes to... So you knew all the way back then that you liked men. Like, it wasn't no, like a No, I mean, secret. I guess it was the beginning. <laughs> You're but... like, if my first celebrity crush Who is... Who was the first girl celebrity crush? Britney Spears. Of course. Obviously, I could have you know, she that got, question you know, for her. She cut her hair into she, a boy's Yeah, haircut. but that was like later no. on. So who's your celebrity crush, so, your first celebrity crush? It's between Chad and Michael Murray. You're lying. Me too? Yeah, it's because of all our that's shows. That's so 2003. So yeah, like, it's because of all our TV shows. Oh, One Tree Hill, you know, like. Oh my God, okay, and who, between who and who? Nick Jonas. You too? No. No. Justin Nick Bieber? Jonas? No. no, Justin Bieber was stop, never like stop, even on stage. Wait, wait, wait. Nick Jonas right now? No, no, no. Nick if, Jonas if you right can now. Pull up a picture right. of him right okay, now first so of all, everybody can see. Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, Nick Jonas is taken. Honey. We all know who he's taken from. We can't really. We can't take yeah, the there, spotlight on there. Yeah. No, but Nick Jonas is a lot hotter now than he ever was. Well, exactly. But I agree with you, Chad Michael Murray. He might like still be, but. Wasn't he bi? Chad Michael Murray was bi? I heard oh, he was nice. bisexual, gay. I actually something. love him even more for that, not gonna lie. <laughs> no, he was very appealing. Like, I don't like those kind of men who are. Too much, yeah. But too like I would not go out with that kind of guy. But I totally go. Chad Michael Murray, I will go out with. No, you I will definitely go out with only with Chad like, Michael Murray. But okay, yeah. But with the question, the question is, the who was your crush? No, I mean the trick is like I like. Nick, whenever he looked like he did okay. back in '98, uh, right, 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 right. So but back in '98, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. So like if you like in the prime, you yeah. Know? So like if you watch them now, it's like, do you feel the same way? But Nick Jonas, okay, I get what you mean because Jonas Brothers isn't around anymore. But Nick Jonas is at his prime right now, right, right now. And I will go he out with you. All, just call. Uh, no, he was always at his prime. I don't Absolutely know where you guys were. Not. Absolutely not, Adi. You're too young. Pick girl. away. I'm too young. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> too young for me, bro. <laughs> Are you holding your question? Or uh, I may I or may not. No. Okay. Whatever. What's a secret you kept from your parents in high school? What's a secret? You have to tell them. Mm. Why you, you picked you up the should, question. You have you to answer. Go. Why do I get these questions? Okay. okay. What's um, a secret? Have you ever snuck out? Did you ever I had I had like secret friends that my parents did not know I'm friends with. Like I would say I'm going to a friend. Wait, and then that's so funny. You too. No. Oh. I told my parents everything. I didn't know. No, I told them, but then I saw that they were not accepting that, so I had to do something about it. And then but what I, kind of friends they were? They were bad friends. Bad influence. Bad influence. Bad influence <laughs> friends. Okay. What's a secret that you kept from your parents? I used to steal money from them. Mm. Oh, so we I talked we about this. Did. We talked about this. I, okay, the occasional $20. The $20. Yeah, I owe you plenty but more money like, than $20. Like, somehow, that way. You know your mother has always a stash of money in your house. Like, yes. you know where it is. Yes. I, I know, know where the 20s are. You know it's always in the fridge yes. door also. Yes. Yes. You just go there, you grab and yeah. like... She won't notice. And if she will, she'll know who it went to and it'll be me and it'll be less upsetting. What did I... I never lied to my parents, I swear. I think I lied really? to them once when I was maybe like 13 and I drank alcohol. Oh, well, I, I was 13 alcohol. and I yeah. shouldn't have been drinking alcohol. Mm. Anyway, I told them like two months later and they're like, okay, thanks for cool. telling thanks us. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, let's see. I'm intrigued to see <laughs> which one I get. Oh, what would be the one food you'd eat forever? <laughs> I think, I think I want to, okay. So I want to say hamburger, okay. but I'll tell you why. That's actually it. Never mind. I decided a hamburger is What? It. Wanna know why? I was gonna choose pizza. I was debating between pizza and, and a hamburger, but a hamburger at least has like meat. Like I'll Can you still eat be getting my morning? protein. Right? No. I don't is that care about I just, I just want meat. Anything with meat will do No, so me. I hate meat. I'm like yeah, part vegetarian rather, minus hamburgers. Yeah. So I think it would be between truffle pizza slash spinach truffle pizza with a ham or with a hamburger on the side. Can it be a whole meal? No. Okay, fine, hamburger it is. Okay. What's yours? <laughs> I think anything with meat, but since you mentioned pizza, I mean, That's I could have pizza for the rest of yeah, my life. Yeah, and it's so basic. It's just kind of like okay, one no. of those things. <laughs> pasta. Where? Where do you live? Oh, oh, every day I have to have pasta. Like I don't know. Like where? But do you she guys looks live? like this. In case no, you guys like, are wondering, <laughs> that's what she looks I like can, when she pasta, eats pasta. Pizza is not a go-to. Okay, you're about to get kicked out of the studio. You're about to get kicked out of the studio. What's the question that you want? <laughs> 
after I make you my pasta, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll this talk. one, I like this paper. Oh. What's the strangest the thing you are afraid of? Okay. okay. Now I can. <laughs> I want to hear this. I'm literally not scared of many things. Okay. But if I'm scared of something and like I won't even touch it because I think it's disgusting. Like I'm I curious to know what it is. I can't even. It's uh, cockroaches. Oh. Or like we call it in Israel, uh, jukim. Jukim. Oh. Okay. I'm not deathly afraid. But you know what? what? You, you see, I know. I know. You know what's the worst thing? Worst thing that happened in my life. I mean, we saw this. Ginormous. Ginormous, yeah. yeah. And then we went there and was like, okay, let's just take it out. And it's Ooh, all of a sudden, I am getting she goes like, no, no, ah, no, she's lying. no, they fly. And they fly. I hate <laughs> those. Those should be extinct, except for the fact that they're most likely okay, never going to be extinct. Can we talk about the sound they afraid? make when you crash no, them? No, we're not going to oh. talk about that. What? I can't even. I, I, I just. You're just like, never mind. I'm going to no. move. What's? What are you afraid of? I'm scared of heights. Okay. When I I'm walk on a bridge, I'm like terrified. I don't what walk if on I bridges, fall? but I totally do. You, when do you yeah. walk on the bridge? I don't know. Or like when drive on it. it. <laughs> when you gonna do it? Or on a plane, and I'm over oh, the sea, man. and I see water, and I'm like, oh my god, if I go in, sharks. I think me and you were soulmates. I, I like you when, too, right? No, like everything. Though. I like when they say you can fly when you're flying on a plane, but you you don't cross the sea. You're just flying, you know, mm -hmm. cities, and they say, okay, you have the life vest, mm -hmm. in just in case. What is that gonna happen? Yeah, I mean, if it falls, I need a parachute. Do you have a parachute? Shoot underneath my seat, yes or no? How's that gonna help you if a shark is underneath? So let me tell you what yeah. my biggest fear is. Absolutely everything. Let me tell you why. I am literally scared of all potential things that could potentially happen. Oh, me too. You know that That's movie? called anxiety. Well, I do prank you a lot. Yeah, you need office. a. Mm -hmm. Um, you know that movie, the series of unfortunate events. Yeah. Oh. That's what goes Sorry, on in my head. Yeah. Like, oh, but what She's if I always keep... what if. I'm yeah, also the what if, like, always. What if I keep, what if like, you know, the handlebar of the door gets super, super heated and then it explodes and then, it, uh -huh. you know what I'm explodes. talking about? Well, it happens oh. in the movie. It doesn't really happen in real life. What do you mean it explodes? Okay. <laughs> um, do we have time for another, another question? Yes or no? Okay, we don't. So oh. we're going to save these questions for next time. <laughs> oh, wow. That went really fast. That I know, it did. Back. But we have some really interesting questions in here. You guys are definitely going to want to tune in. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank and you. I will see you guys next week for Hot Topics Off Topic. And that was this week's Hot Topic. If you guys have any topics you'd like us to talk about, make sure to write it in the comment section and add some questions for us to answer. That's unfortunately all the time we have left of today's episode. I wanted to thank all our guests for coming in. And of course, for all you viewers out there, make sure to check us out on our ILTV YouTube page under Israel in Style if you missed any shows. Have a fabulous and stylish week, everyone.